Okay guys, so now let's start with the coding part of this crash course. Uh, if you see on your screen, these are the topics that we're going to cover in this crash course. So we'll start with some basic topics like how to write comments, printing, what are the various data types in Python, taking user inputs, what are variables, things like that. And gradually we'll move on to some intermediate topics like if else statements and running loops in Python. Okay. And then we'll move on to the data structures that are available in Python, like strings or lists or tuples or sets or dictionaries. Okay. So uh, to be honest, it's going to be a long video. I know that. But uh, one thing that I can guarantee you is that if you stick, if you see this entire video, I promise that I will for sure, uh, I'll be able to teach you the fundamentals of Python and you will not face any issue in the future. Okay. So uh, one more thing that I would like to discuss before starting, that is, uh, I'm not going to use any native software. I'm not going to ask you to download some software because I'm going to use this wonderful tool called Google Collaboratory. Okay. Uh, it's an online tool where you can uh, learn Python or you can actually run Python and you don't need to install any software. It's, it, it runs on the cloud. Uh, you can directly type your code in the browser and you'll be able to see the result. Okay. So it, it was primarily designed for machine learning and stuff but you can also run uh, vanilla Python. Okay. So there is no issue. So this is how you uh, uh, start coding in uh, Google Colab. You simply Google for Google Colab. And uh, this is the first result. Simply click on Google Colab. And from there, uh, you can simply click on this button, new notebook. Uh, once you click on this button, a new uh, Google Colab notebook will be created for you. One more uh, good thing about Google Colab is that it stores the file in your drive account. So whenever you want to see the code that you have written, you can simply go to your drive account and from there you can open it. Okay. So you can see, um, uh, this is the file. Uh, let me rename this file to Python crash course. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, one more thing that I have already uh, done here is I have written down all the topics that we are going to cover. So what I'll do is I'll simply copy this entire thing since I've created a new collab file. I'll simply click on, there are two options. Okay. So for the first option is code. So whenever you want to type Python, you will select this option. And whenever you would like to write some notes or, you know, uh, things which will explain what you have done. Uh, in that case, you can simply opt for this text panel. Okay. So I'm opting for this text thing and this is the text window. I'll simply paste my code over here and to run the code, you should simply have to pre, uh, uh, do a shift enter and we are done with this. So now that our setup is re ready, uh, let's start with the coding part. Okay. So the first topic that we are going to learn is writing comments. Okay. So I'll again, uh, add a text window. And over there, I'll put a double hash and I'll write the first topic to be comments. Okay. Uh, writing comments in Python is very, very easy. First of all, let's define what is a comment. If you are a beginner, you have never coded before, you have never programmed before. Uh, comment is basically uh, this piece of code, which is not executed by the compiler or the interpreter. Okay. So there is no result uh, of this code. It's a plain piece of text which a compiler cannot see. That's it. So why do you add a comment to your code? The answer is simple because you want uh, that there should be something which will explain what you have done. Okay. The logic part or whatever you have done there, because to be honest, you're going to work in some team, in some company. So over there, uh, you would collaborate on some projects with some other teammates and colleagues. Uh, so you would like to explain what you have done in your file. Okay. So that is the primary reason. Sometimes you also need to understand what you did six months back on a project. In that case, also a comment will help you. Okay. So writing comment is a good practice. I would recommend if you are a beginner, make it a habit. It will really help you in your career. Okay. So let me show you how can you write a comment in Python. Okay. Uh, it's very simple. You just put a hash and then you write whatever you want to write as a comment. So this is a comment, right? And that's it. If you run your code, you will see nothing will be printed because uh, a comment has no output. Okay. Uh, one more thing uh, in Python, there are no multi-line comments. 
So if you want to write multi-line comments for every line, we'll have to start with a hash. Okay. Uh, so I hope writing comments is uh, done. It's very simple, right? Now let's move on to the second topic of the day. That is printing. Okay. Uh, it's one of the most important things. Whenever you learn a new language, the first code that you write is hello world program. Okay. So that hello world program implements that output functionality. Okay. So let's discuss how can we output something in Python. It's very simple. Uh, I'll first add a text cell. By the way, these things are known as cells where we write code and stuff. Uh, I'll put two hashes and then I'll write the second topic is print, right? Uh, to print out things in Python, we use this function called print, okay? Pretty straightforward. So I'll give you an example how print is used. It's very simple. You write print, then inside the brackets, you pass the input. Let's say I want to print hello world. That's it. Unlike C, you don't have to include any files. You don't have to write void main construct, nothing. Just plain one single line that is print hello world. And to run this code, hit shift enter. And this is your output. As easy as it can, as it can get. Okay. Very, very simple. Okay. The good part about print is that it is able to print all the uh, data types that are present in Python. So if you want, you can easily print out integers like this. Or you can easily print out floats. It can easily print out boolean. Right? So the fundamental rule is that print function can print out pretty much everything, every data type that is supported in Python. Plus, it can also print out variables. Okay. So if I could I could write it down, there are two points worth remembering. The first point is print is able to print all data types or rather you should say all valid data types and second I would say it can also print the value of a variable right we have not defined or we have not learned variable as of yet but we'll do it uh, in a later stage in this crash course and then I'll show you how to print out a variable. It's a very simple thing. Okay. So, uh, to be honest, when I first did the print function, I was, I was really impressed. Okay. Because print not only uh, does this simple things like printing out uh, data types and variables, it also has some hidden powerful features. Let me show you one of them. Uh, so there is one feature where you can actually print out multiple things together. Unlike C's printf. Okay. What you can do is if you want, let's say if you want to print out multiple things, uh, let's say one, hello, 6.7 and two, I want to print out all of these things together. Okay. So if I run shift enter, this is the result. You can totally see Python faced no difficulty at all in printing out multiple things together. In fact, it did it pretty easily. So what it did, it, it kind of uh, infused a space, a white space between two things once you separate them by a comma. Okay. And that's the funda. There's no upper limit. You can print 10 things, 100 things, 1000 things. There is no upper limit. Python's print function can handle any number of inputs. That's the beauty. That's the power. Okay. Now, uh, you might have this doubt like I had. Uh, the doubt could be why is there a space in between? Why not something else? So let me give you the reason. The reason is, uh, I'll write it in the comment, why the white space, right? Why the white space, question mark, okay? Uh, the reason for that is, it's because there is a hidden parameter there by the name of set. And the default value for set is a white space. And because of that parameter, you get this behavior where Python automatically prints a space between two inputs. Okay. Uh, so if you want to overwrite that behavior, you have to simply write S E P C you're getting this option set is equal to, and you can set it to something else. Let's say a slash. And if you run this code now, see now that default space has been overridden by a slash. You can also override it with something else. Let's say, a hyphen okay so one two comma three four comma five 
sep is equal to hyphen. And now if you print this, uh, you should get a hyphen in between. Okay. So again, Python is giving you this feature, this power where you can customize its behavior. Okay. And now that that will make you feel powerful as a programmer, right? Uh, I'll I'll give you one more thing uh, about print. So in Python, if you try to print out multiple things using multiple print statements, the default behavior is that Python automatically prints out all of these things in separate lines, as you can see. So hello is printed in the first line, then automatically you get a line change and world is printed there. In fact, if you write a third line, that will be printed in the third line. Okay. So let's say how are you and you will notice that this third statement will be printed in the third line. So the default behavior again is that Python automatically changes line after every print statement. That's the default behavior. And again, this is because there is a hidden parameter, just like set, there is a hidden parameter called end, E-N-D. And the default value for that parameter is slash n or line change or new line. Okay. So if you want to, again, overwrite that behavior, what you would do is, let me show you, I would write hello and then I would write end to be equal to something else. Let's say slash. And now if I write world, this is the output, hello slash world, because this time you replaced slash n with a slash. Okay. So no line change occurred and you printed both of these statements in the same line. Okay. So I'll recap a bit. We started learning about the print statement. So, uh, Print can easily print out all the valid data types in Python. It can also print out variables, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, print can also print multiple inputs together. That is a great feature. Then print can, uh, uh, print can also give you this, uh, power or this feature where what you can do is you can, uh, customize the behavior and you can put whatever you want to put in between multiple items when you are giving multiple inputs. You can also uh, change the behavior where it automatically puts new uh, print statements in new lines by you know manipulating the end parameter. Okay, so I hope uh, things are clear with print. Now let's move on to the second part. We are going to discuss data types.